Hi, I'm Neil Davidson, the Director of Biomedical Services for Renew Biomedical. Today we'll be going over the LifePak 20E. The difference between the LifePak 20E and the early models such as the LifePak 12 or even the newer model, the LifePak 15, the 20 is more hospital use, it's smaller, it's compact, it does three lead and five lead only. Your LifePak 12 uh, was more EMS based. It had 12 lead option, Bluetooth transmission, which the LifePak 20 does not. So the E stands for energy. The early model, the LifePak 20, um, was a NICAD battery. The E is energy. They went from a NICAD battery to a lithium ion. So uh, better battery, uh, longer shelf life, um, and longer lifespan overall. I'm gonna cover how to install the battery, paper, AED mode, basic operations. We'll cover defibrillation, cardiosynchronization, pacing, and basic button operations. Uh, I'll start by installing the battery, tip it up on its backside. You'll notice there's two little tabs down here in the middle. I use a little standard screwdriver. You could use a key and or anything that'll fit. Door pops right out. On the battery, you're going to be looking for this little black triangle and that is going to line up with the side of your cable and there's only one way that it goes in. Plug in the battery, it goes into the machine, put the battery door back over and you should hear that click, you'll know it's good and secure. Next we're going to turn it to the side. You'll notice there's a little black tab. You want to push that, open your printer door. It's typical 50 millimeter graph paper. Goes right into the holder, it lays on top of the bracket, and you simply shut the door. Paper's ready to go. Next, we're gonna plug it in. Uh, in the back, it's your standard power cord, three prong. And when I plugged it in, if you notice, Eventually your AC mains light turns green. That is letting us know that it is getting power. The battery's charging. Next, we're going to power it on. Um, as you notice, there is a door, and when we power it on, it will power on in AD mode only. So, it's asking me to connect the therapy cable. You have your standard quick combo or therapy cable. Electrodes. Clicks in, it's asking me to connect the electrodes. Uh, have your standard anterior or sternum apex pads. Um, I'm using a simulator. I'm going to plug it in. Push analyze. And it's asking me to press analyze. We'll hit analyze. Analyzing now. Stand clear. No shock advised. Start CPR. So it there was no uh, the LifePak 20E didn't notice a or detect a shockable rhythm. It didn't see VTAC and or VFib. No shock advise, and it goes into instructions for CPR. That will continue for two minutes. It will then reanalyze and inform you whether or not to perform the shock. At the end of the two minutes, it's asking me to push analyze. We'll push analyze. We now have our simulator in VFib. Shock advised. So it recognized there was no R wave. Push to shock. Charged, and we're going to push the shock button to deliver the energy. Uh, goes back into CPR. So when you power it on with the door opened, it's in basic AED mode for BLS. Um, when I shocked, it gave the rhythm in order for ALS. There's a little button. Um, it's going to open the door, take it out of AED mode. We've got our monitoring mode, and it is now uh, ready for manual defibrillation. The energy buttons are live for energy select down, energy select up. You can still charge it at any time. You can analyze again if you'd like. We'll go ahead and hit the charge button. 360 joules is max energy on the LifePak 20E. 
Uh, uh, LED is now blinking for the shock. We'll push the shock button, deliver the energy. And anytime that you deliver energy, it's going to print. It's captured that. It wants you to have that data. So it's going to print out a snapshot of the energy in the heart rhythm. Now that we've covered manual defibrillation, we're going to go over cardio synchronization, followed by pacing, and then a general button layout. Um, when I hit sync, you'll notice the LED is blinking green, and we now have our sync arrows, our markers up top. So no different than manual defibrillation. You hit the charge button. Once it's reached max energy, instead of pushing the shock button, you have to push and hold it so that it will sync itself with your marker. Um, push and hold, it delivers the energy, and you get your printout. If you'll notice, it takes itself out of cardio sync. So if you were to cardiovert that patient again, you'd have to hit the sync button to reinitiate sync mode. Uh, if you don't want it in sync mode, hit the button, LED goes off, it's no longer in sync mode. As for pacing, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my leads. It's a standard three lead cable. Um, in order to pace, you're gonna hit the pacer key, your LED illuminates, your rate shows on the screen. It's a default at 60 paces per minute. Um, you can increase your rate with the up arrow, decrease with the down arrow. In order to gain capture, we're going to up arrow on the current, typically around 30 to 40 MA when you gain capture. And we're gonna push and hold the pause button. Uh, we get our printout and you're gonna get a four to one ratio. It's basically zooming in and showing you the underlying rhythm. You can unpause the pacing and it returns back to demand pacing. Hit the print button to stop the paper and or if you wanna stop, start the paper, you can hit print and it's gonna start printing what's on the, on the monitoring screen. To go over uh, the rest of the buttons, we have our code summary button. Once you press code summary, it's going to print out the entire case from the time you powered it on. Uh, energy select, every keystroke is saved and documented time and date stamped on there. I'm gonna stop the printer. Uh, let's say you, the home button is going to, if you hit energy select or a button you didn't wanna hit, you can hit the home button. It's gonna bring you back into monitoring mode. The event button is gonna bring up uh, options. Uh, say you want it to administer atropine or medicine during the case. You can hit your event button, select atropine, and it's gonna put that into your trend report and or code summary. We have our analyze, oh, excuse me. We have the lead button. It allows you to scroll through lead one, two, three, and or paddles, or in this case, your pads and your therapy cable. The size is going to be the size of your lead. It's gonna adjust the amplitude. Um, we have our alarms button. You can set your alarm limits, your suspend the alarms, set your VFib, VTAC alarm, and then our options button. Um, you can enter patient data, change the time and date, set your pacing defaults, um, print the code summary. To perform a user test on the LifePack 20, we're going to hit options, scroll over to user test, and it's telling me to connect the test plug. So your test plug is zip tied onto your therapy cable. I'm going to plug in the test plug. test plug. The device is always assuming that you're trying to save a patient's life. So if you powered it on and the test plug was in, it's gonna tell you to remove it in order to attach your pads. We're going to ignore that message and we're going to continue user test. It's letting me know that it's leaving monitoring and it's going to run a user test. <laughs> So basics communications it's going to internally charge discharge when it's finished with the user test it will power off print a strip uh, with the time and date and you can save that for your records 
Awesome. We're going to power it on. We're going to go over the pads and paddles. Um, I'm going to take it out of AD mode by hitting the manual button. Once again, it's assuming I'm saving a life. If you have the test plug in, it will at 3 a.m. run a user test, wake itself up and do your daily test. Connect. I'm going to unplug the user test and install our basic adult pediatric pads or electrodes. Plug right into your therapy cable. Sternum, apex, stand clear, charge, shock. Uh, so in order to perform the self-test with the paddles, options, scroll the user test, no different than your therapy cable and your test plug, but you do have to have the paddles plugged in and you get to print out. The, um, so they all have three lead, five lead, um, pacing, defib sync you can get them without pacing um, no blood pressure there if you want it to monitor entitl co2 you have to purchase a code management module on the bottom you can then monitor entitl co2 plug in your filter line nasal cannula it's ready to go thanks for watching if you found this video useful please like the video subscribe below and if you have any additional questions please contact renew biomedical thanks